It's Thursday, August 11th, and that means it's National Align Your Teeth Day. Well, brace yourself, because we've got a lot of news to cover. That's right, I'm your host, Andrew, and this is Crypto Espresso, your teeny tiny daily shot of caffeinated crypto headlines. You know, some days the stars align and we have a lot of news, and today is such a day. First up, Bitcoin raced towards $25,000 on Thursday after new figures showed inflation in the U.S. is slowing down. The Consumer Price Index rose 8.5% year-on-year in July, and while that's still abnormally high, it is better than what analysts expected. This may mean that the Federal Reserve will be less aggressive when it comes to increasing interest rates in the months ahead. Investors are now waiting with bated breath to see whether Bitcoin can break through $25,000, a price that hasn't been seen in almost two months. Some analysts Analysts are cautious, though. Michel Van de Pop said, Nasdaq is back to May levels while Bitcoin is still down 20% from there. Not the strongest bounce, still lots to gain and to earn. A huge milestone has been achieved in Ethereum's quest to move to a proof-of-stake blockchain. Goerli, the third and final testnet, has successfully switched over to this consensus algorithm. It was important for developers to get right, and was the final dress rehearsal before next month's merge. The transition to proof-of-stake, which has been presented as more scalable and environmentally friendly than proof-of-work, has been years in the making. Ether has rallied by 11% in 24 hours as news of the successful test emerged, hitting highs of $1,908 at one point. Goerli was named after a train station in Berlin, and the next stop, (laughs) for developers, is confirming when the merge should happen. Celsius Network is facing not one, but two objections from the Justice Department in relation to its bankruptcy. The first concerns plans to pay $409,000 in severance to just 19 employees, far more than what U.S. guidelines suggest. One person who's been at the company for just six weeks is set to get almost $21,000. Meanwhile, an objection has been raised over Celsius Network Network's request for permission to sell off Bitcoin. The DOJ says this shouldn't be allowed until the company is transparent about how many coins it owns, what they're worth, where they are, and what the cash from a sale would be used for. Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands of Celsius customers remain locked out of their crypto savings. A new class action lawsuit is accusing billionaire Mark Cuban and Voyager Digital CEO Stephen Ehrlich of duping millions of Americans into buying cryptocurrencies. The court filings allege 3.5 million people lost $5 billion as a result, and the two should be responsible for paying them back. It's claimed young and inexperienced investors were primarily targeted through youth-forward marketing, and the Shark Tank star is quoted as saying Voyager is as close to risk-free as you're going to get in the crypto universe. Voyager Digital is currently in the middle of bankruptcy proceedings, with customers frozen out of their crypto accounts. Lawyers representing the plaintiffs have likened the company to a massive Ponzi scheme. An Iranian man has been charged with attempting to pay for the assassination of a former U.S. national security advisor through crypto. Sharam Porsafi allegedly offered up to $1.3 million for jobs that included eliminating John Bolton, who was a senior official in Donald Trump's administration. Prosecutors believe that the 45-year-old wanted revenge Revenge after Iran's most powerful military commander, Qasim Soleimani, was killed in a U.S. airstrike. Bolton was not harmed as a result of the plot, and poor Safi remains at large in Iran. U.S. officials have warned that this is not an isolated incident and say attempted assassinations of government officials on American soil are completely unacceptable and will not be tolerated. And while we're on the subject of violence for hire, a man has admitted that he plotted to find multiple hitmen on the dark web, paying them $60,000 in bit coin. Ronald Eilg wanted a doctor he used to work with to suffer a significant beating that would break both of his hands. The 55-year-old also requested for his estranged wife to be kidnapped and injected with heroin so she wouldn't divorce him. He relied on the username SCAR215 to conceal his identity and used the password MUFASA dollar sign dollar sign. Eilg was a doctor who treated newborn children and he's facing up to eight years in jail after reaching a plea deal. U.S. Attorney Vanessa Waldriff says more people could have been harmed if these first two attacks were successful. He'll be sentenced in November. Ugh, and finally, MailChimp has suspended the accounts of several crypto media outlets, including Messari and Decrypt. The company provides email marketing 
services and also allows newsletters to be sent to subscribers. Masari has reacted furiously to the ban with its founder Ryan Selkis tweeting, Thank you for deplatforming some of crypto's most reputable brands in the past 48 hours. You're proving our point. MailChimp and all speech censors must be destroyed. Affected companies were given zero warning or explanation, and some are now unable to access their subscriber lists. This has happened before, but confusingly, MailChimp has said in the past that crypto-related information isn't necessarily prohibited. And you made it to the end of this extremely long Crypto Espresso. You must also like crypto-related information that isn't necessarily prohibited, so be sure to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and click on that little bell icon to get buzzed whenever a new Crypto Espresso video goes live. Do you like longer episodes? Hate them? Let let us know your feelings in the comments below. Think of it as a free therapy session. And while you're below this video, check out our description because that's where you can ask Alex for more information on our headlines or crypto in general. Alex is also a great resource for all things Web3 and the metaverse. And that does it. You know, this is our longest episode we've ever done, so I hope we still have news left over for tomorrow. Again, I've been your host, Andrew. These have been your headlines, and we'll see you then.